first return. There we go. This one's coming out from under the old MLI, right, that you took off? Yes. Okay. One of the wires that goes to the right-hand set of thermistors. Okay. Roger, I see it here in the picture. The replacement magnetometers each have uh, four turn knobs to lock them in place over the top of the existing magnetometers. Wait, wait. I got, uh, oh, I got no, I'm not clear. It's go with the empty. Okay. And the line's not clear. Yeah, that's the We have a very good picture, Jeff. Okay, well, people who know the Nolan magnetometers will certainly recognize them. Uh, the one that says ZY was the one that was on top. That's the first one that I noticed was actually uh, peeled up a little bit. It was sort of sitting about like, like so. Crews now are getting their work sites set up, getting their tools in order and making sure that all the tethers are in place. During uh, the spacewalk, the crew can be distinguished from one another by uh, the fact that Mission Specialist Kathy Thornton will be riding on the arm while uh, Acres will be free floating. In addition, uh, Thornton's suit has a broken red stripe around the legs, while Acres' suit has a diagonally broken red stripe around the legs. James, one of the things we've been able to enjoy watching is the uh, choreography between the uh, crew member operating the mechanical arm and the person that's out on the end of it as Kathy is here. The uh, Canadian-built mechanical arm with a foot restraint in it is a uh, marvelous way to do business. If we didn't have that functioning or available to us, we would have to have foot restraints placed throughout the payload bay, and the crew members would have to get in and out of those and kind of leapfrog the handling of the various different instruments to and from this telescope as they're doing their work. This saves a tremendous amount of time. Copy. Stand by, KT, please. Get over there. Are you ready to go, KT? Yeah. Okay, swing it. Uh, you want to grab, I mean, Tom, you want to grab the other one? I'll keep, keep swinging. Okay, uh, call it in the back just a little bit, please. Okay. Um, okay. Bam, I'm here. Got it. Yep, I've got it. 
got it. Let it go. Hey, let's chase that Portland pod. Never Houston, Houston, a minute and a half to LOS. Be back with you on the West. 1954. Houston, uh, we've got a good shot of you, Tom, from the elbow. If you want to wave to Kay and the girls. Say again, Greg. 
Troy, I was just saying that we got a great shot of Tom there. We can see his face very clearly. I thought he might want to wave to home. I do have some good news for you, Jeff, um, and for everybody. Um, the uh, payloads folks informed me that uh, the DF and the coprocessor have gone through a complete checkout and are fully functional. Great news. Well, almost home free. That's right. The way I see and, it. Uh, Go ahead. We've got a basically a new telescope up there, and. Uh, it could be real exciting for the astronomical community, I guess, and for the whole world to see what uh, Hubble really can do with uh, a good set of eyeballs. Endeavor Houston, more good news. Co processor is checked out, fully verified. Yahoo! And that's that, that comes from the mid deck. This is Mission Control Houston aboard Endeavour. At present, uh, the crew is just a little more than five minutes away from an engine firing that will serve to reboost Endeavour and the Hubble Space Telescope, raise the orbit 
to a circular orbit of 321 nautical miles above Earth. Endeavor's moving towards sunset about five minutes away from moving into the night side of Earth. In progress, the manual deploy of the second uh, solar array down to the uh, open position. The uh, secondary drive mechanisms that actually roll out the new solar array blankets is not done until after this EVA is completed or this spacewalk. The payload community commenting that they are uh, relieved to see this uh, solar array uh, being uh, opened. Endeavour Houston, the GHRS is ready and awaiting. Okay, thanks a lot, Greg. Copy story. Yeah. The Space Telescope Operations Control Center has uh, turned off any electrical connections or any electrical power to the Goddard High Resolution Spectrograph, uh, and the crew's been given a go to install the uh, redundancy kit, the cabling kit uh, that was designed for this uh, task once they get the uh, doors open. There's four latches on the doors that protect the, the instrument along with the famed object spectrograph. Uh, let's say zero degrees will be fine. Ready? I'll wait 
the drift gets off, of course. Okay. Back to the uh, top of the telescope story, Musgrave and Jeff Hoffman again to install some fabricated uh, insulation boxes over the old uh, magnetic sensing systems as the orbiter moves up the northwest coast of Australia. And Kyle, those two gentlemen on the end of that arm are having the view of their lives right now, looking over the top of the scope down at the Earth. You heard Story even remark about it. Uh, I can tell you this is this is probably a moment they'll remember f uh, for many, 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 many years to come. Okay, here comes one. Okay, I'll take the needle nose pliers, Teddy. Here's a. And we have got an unbelievable picture from the elbow camera right now. Every Houston, we're ready for free drift, and uh, we need a camera view of the array, please. We do not want to delay, and we do not want to delay the uh, egress of the MFR. However, Roger, I understand. Uh, we'll get the uh, elbow camera back over on the array, and we're going free drift. Roger. The second solar array wing uh, process of being deployed as Endeavour moves uh, off the southeastern coast of Madagascar. Again, the uh, flex in the arrays is designed to account for uh, any tolerances in uh, movement of the solar arrays. Again, antenna deploy is in progress aboard Endeavour and aboard the Hubble Space Telescope.
This is a simultaneous deploy of both antennas, one on this side of the telescope and one 180 degrees around on the back side of the telescope. This is about a seven minute in duration uh, process, very slow and deliberate. in view the two grapple fixtures that are av available for the shuttle's robot arm to uh, retrieve and deploy the telescope for servicing. This is Mission Control Houston. We now have live television from a cameras in Endeavour's cargo bay. Endeavour currently above the southern Pacific Ocean on a track that will have it to make landfall above Central America. This view showing uh, the solar panels, the new solar arrays uh, that were installed by the crew on the second spacewalk of the mission and uh, that were unfurled yesterday. I see you think, go ahead. Cubby, um, we'd like you to go ahead and not perform the maneuver that you've got loaded up for 1800, and I'll tell you why. We have been spending a lot of time looking at DIU 2 telemetry, and uh, we now conclude that we do see more than just data dropouts in that telemetry. We're looking at the signature of the power control unit, and uh, it is indicating that there is some troubleshooting that is worthwhile to perform before we deploy this thing, uh, primarily having to do with the A side of the DIU. So what we want to do is spend the next two to three revs doing this troubleshooting it involves going to internal power once we get to our next sunset and then swapping to the B side of that DIU. And in addition to that, we're also checking out the functionality of the battery charge relays. All of this is going to take at least two revs to accomplish. And because of that, we are definitely going to delay to deploy by two revs. During the next couple hours, we're going to be looking at all of this troubleshooting information, and by MET of 20 hours, we hope to have a decision of whether or not we will actually deploy today. This will, of course, depend on what we see over the next couple revs. In the meantime, we'd like you guys to sit tight. Uh, don't perform any maneuvers. We like the attitude we're in right now. We will give you a call for the internal power steps. And we want you to just relax for a while and then bask in the glow of all the great work you've been doing the last week. Okay, well, we understand, understand Susan, and um, we've got plenty of work to do uh, other than to deploy, and we're taking care of that stuff uh, now, getting tools uh, put back together and stowed, and, and uh, we'll continue working those things. My understanding is there's nothing in the flight plan that you want us to do then until you give us a call. That's correct, Covey. If we decide that we need to put you to work on something else in order to make our time more efficient for the next couple days, we will call you. This is the Space Telescope Operations Control Center at uh, the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, with uh, that call from Mission Specialist Kathy Thornton confirming that uh, the space telescope has now been switched to its own internal power sources. The next step in this uh, troubleshooting procedure uh, during this night pass, Endeavour now is on the nighttime side of Earth uh, with about a little under 33 minutes left to go before sunrise comes again for the spacecraft. The next step is disconnection of the umbilical uh, through which electrical power has been fed to the telescope uh, throughout its stay in the cargo bay. And, uh, the space telescope uh, now already operating off of its own uh, battery power on board. Endeavour Houston with the final chapter of the big picture. Final chapter sound good. Go ahead, Susan. Well, Covey, I've got good news. 
uh, we have taken a look at that data from the B side, and it all checks out. The HST project would like to deploy today, and so we are going to go ahead and press toward a release. We are going to uplink to you a new replanned flight plan that has moved all of your activities for that REV-121 deploy. And we just want to let you know that right now there's no activity required from you until about 21 hours even when we'll be talking about a Group B power-up. We are hoping to get the uplink through tips of your new flight plan within the next half hour. Great. Uh uh, understand that uh, until 2100 hours, which will be the uh, out, that we'll have no schedule activity. And we're ZOE, that's good copy. This view from the camera at the end of the arm is uh, the fixture is lined up. And the payload deploying retrieval systems officer here, the position with the responsibility for the mechanical arm, reports that telescopes now securely captured. Never, that was a beautiful grapple. Latches continue to open. Again, once all the latches are open, the next step will be for Claude Nicolier to lift the telescope from its platform to position just above the cargo bay position called uh, low hover. The, the payload deploy retrieval systems officer reports telescopes now about two feet up above the platform as Nicole A continues to slowly raise it up to first a position uh, paused above the cargo bay at low hover. Commands are being sent now to uh, open the telescope's aperture door and to uh, activate the mechanism's control unit for the door emergency closure.
have a good release. Uh, TIG of SEP was 1 hour, 0 minutes, 22 seconds. Copy. 1 hour, 0 minutes, 22 seconds, Covey. And we have to say that through your superb efforts, you have really shown that NASA can do all that we promise to do and more, and we very much appreciate it. The uh, sentiments of the uh, payload community and, in fact, the, uh, all of the flight control team uh, expressed on the uh, model in front of the flight director console, uh, HST reopened for business, completely, completely renovated. That uh, Now that the telescope is uh, locked onto the tracking and data relay satellite, transmitting data on its own, Oh, it's not bad. And I, I got to tell you, these views are so spectacular. But over the course of the last week, we've seen so many spectacular views that you almost get numb to it. They're still incredible, though. We know what you mean. It's hard to top the one from the day before. You are right about that.
in this view showing the entire uh, island of Madagascar off the east coast of Africa in the Indian Ocean. Go ahead, Endeavor. Roger, you getting uh, downlink uh, video of the dump? That's firm. Uh, we're uh, watching it right now. Looks pretty interesting. Kind of like a tinkle. That's basically what Flight was thinking. This view showing the arm as it descends uh, down into the cradle along the left-hand edge of the bay. Once it's in the cradle, latches uh, will latch it in place, and then it'll be totally powered off. That's firm, we sure are. Okay, well, what you're seeing now is uh, Austin, or correction, San Antonio at the top of the screen, Houston at the bottom, and Austin uh, on the right side. All right, that's a great view. This view showing actually uh, Houston, Texas. And, uh, this is a narrow field of view camera. You should see what else we see. We can only imagine, and we're all jealous. Hey, Greg. Hey, uh, if y'all are still getting our downlink, I uh, wanted to let y'all know that you're seeing the great uh, northwest uh, Florida Gulf Coast and uh, my hometown of Full Walt Beach. I'd sure like to send a hello to all my friends and family down there today. Well, we're getting a great picture of Fort Walton Beach, and we'll pass that along. Looks like a good place to play golf. In Endeavor Houston, for Jeff, uh, all of America would like to know what you've got and what you're doing with it. Well, um, this is the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah, and there's various uh, ways that we celebrate it. And one of the games that, that we play is a little game with a dreidel, and it's something that you spin, and then you see which side comes up, and according to that, you either win or lose. And I was just trying to see how you might reinterpret the rules for space flight, since there's no up or down. And I guess on the subject, to help the celebration, I also brought along the other thing that we do,
Hanukkah is the festival of lights. It lasts eight days, and to celebrate it, we light a little menorah, which has eight candles, and you light one more every day until finally on the eighth day, you have eight candles. And so I brought a little traveling menorah. Of course, up here in the shuttle, uh, we're not going to actually light the candles, but to help the celebration of the season, I brought it along. It's a little, uh, little silver traveling menorah. And so with that and the dreidel, I'm all set for my onboard Hanukkah celebration. We are getting a spectacular view of all of Florida at this moment, out the window. We have here the signatures of uh, all the personnel of the Geneva Observatory and the Institute of Astronomy, Lausanne University. Can we see it, Claude? Thank you. Endeavor, it looks like the entry team is going to come in and take our hours for the rest of the mission. So Orbit 1 would like to say adieu and good luck, and we will talk to you at Ellington.
This is Mission Control Houston. This television view from Endeavor's flight deck, uh, the cockpit of Endeavor, shows uh, Commander Dick Covey as he prepares to work with the uh, pilot in-flight landing operations trainer. It's a simulation of landing that uh, Covey and then uh, pilot Ken Bowersox will both work with. Bowersox here right to behind Covey as Covey works with it to hone their landing skills. Yeah, Taco's down here taking notes.
And finally, from the Orbit 2 team, uh, we would like to convey our thanks to uh, you guys for doing just a stupendous job. It was uh, great for us to watch you professionals at work up there and for me down here to watch the professionals at work down here. It was a heck of a team, and uh, we're all proud of uh, how well this has turned out. And we wish you Godspeed and a safe trip home. Well, thanks, Greg and uh, Milt and all of the uh, rest of the Orbit 2 team uh, that's there. Um, we, uh, we appreciate the, the work that you put in, uh, being a part of the team, helping us through the things that we had to do in order to get to uh, the end of this mission, which uh, hopefully will be tomorrow morning. And uh, we'll see you all at uh, Ellington uh, later on in the morning. You bet, Covey. We'll see you at Ellington.